Okay, so our scripture this morning is from Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The women came and, and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted, and your daughter and her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the word of God for the people of God. So besides our four children and three dogs, we also have two cats. So you need a cat. No, we have two cats. <laughs> and knowing all of that, I'm sure you can kind of think that things are crazy and you're, you're correct. But one of our cats is a little older and is pretty much your average cat. She likes to keep to herself and she only comes to you for love and attention when it suits her. And she's very patient, even when she is hungry. She simply sits beside her dish and waits for you to notice her. That is my cat, and I have to say I prefer her greatly to our other cat. And our other cat is named Pixie. Pixie Piplup Dawn Light, to be exact. Everyone got to pick out a name for her. So Pixie is about a year old, and could not be more annoying when it feels it's time to, be, to feed her. He, he will follow you around the house meowing loudly, not letting you have a second of rest until you fill this food dish. And he has conditioned us very well to know that he is to be fed first thing in the morning and the last thing at night before you go to bed. And while I find Pixie to be annoying at times, it is true that one can surely admire his persistence. You see, it doesn't matter what else is going on in your life at the time, or in that household, Pixie is focused. He's going to be fed, and he's going to be fed right now. And I think we see that same level of persistence from the mother in our scripture today. And what a credit she is to all those who struggle after their goal. I think it's helpful for us to understand the context of the interaction between Jesus and the woman today. You see, she is identified as a Canaanite. She is from the tribe of people that were on the land that was inherited by Abraham's children. So now, if you think about the current situation in Israel, where the Palestinians and Israelis continue to have so much hostility towards one another, it's not unlike what you would have seen between the Jews then and the Canaanites in that area. So generation after generation, they continue to fight over that land. So this mother comes to Jesus, who is, after all, an Israelite, and asked him to heal her daughter. And I think a lot of us are probably unfamiliar with this passage in the Bible. And if we were to think about how Jesus would answer in most other situations, the answer would have simply been, woman of great faith, your child is healed, go forward. But that's not what we get from Jesus in this situation. We get a much different response. At first, when the woman comes forward, Jesus seems to just ignore the woman. And when the apostles start to get annoyed by the woman calling after them, they asked Jesus to say, tell that lady to go away. She's bothering us. Get out of here. Tell her to get out of here. Jesus attempts to send her away by telling her, I have only come for the lost sheep of Israel. You are not of the tribe. I am not here for you. This is akin uh, to, to him saying to the woman, 
I am only here to help your enemies, not you. And it would have been really easy for her to turn away at this point. In fact, I would think that most of us, if we were rebuked in such a strong way, would have left. But she doesn't. She humbles herself even further drops to her knees and calling out to Jesus as Lord. Lord, help me. And again, Jesus tells her that he cannot help her. That helping her would be taking away the food from his children and feeding it to the dogs. This is a very different side of Jesus for us, for sure. But the woman continues on saying, no, I will not give up. Even the dogs are fed by the crumbs of their master's table. Jesus then tells the woman, she is a woman of great faith, and her request is granted, and her daughter is healed. When I consider this interaction, it's really easy for us to read that simply and look at the stance of, why is Jesus being so difficult to this woman? Why does he give her such a hard time? Surely he could have just healed the woman's daughter. After all, though she is a Canaanite, She's still a person. Coming, still a person, and Jesus came to save both Jews and Gentiles, right? I think that Jesus, as he often does, takes this as an opportunity to teach. He's teaching us and the apostles two very important lessons here. The first is that faith is important. The amount of faith that this woman must have had in Jesus' ability to heal her daughter must have been tremendous. She's willing to go to her enemy, a person that has displaced her people from the land. And not only that, but a leader amongst those people. And she's willing to face rejection multiple times. She humbles herself before Jesus by kneeling and calling him Lord. What a powerful testament to her faith. And the second idea that I think Jesus is trying to show us is that having the will to persist when things become difficult is absolutely key in achieving anything. It would have been so easy for the woman to give up when the apostles complained about her. It would have been easy for her to give up when Jesus rejects her. Not only rejects her, but does so in a way that's pretty unkind. But this woman was not easily deterred. She was going to do everything she could to get her daughter the healing that she knew Jesus could give her. This should cause us to evaluate both of these areas in our life. How is your faith? It is my utmost prayer that you can say that your faith is strong. But if you are struggling with your faith, I urge you to find ways to strengthen it. The most important in which I feel is to begin making sure you're committing time to the Lord daily. Not just praying once a day in your memorized prayer as we often fall into, but praying and speaking to the Lord honestly and openly. Remembering to thank God when your prayers are answered, whether it be a yes or a no. And see if after a few days or weeks of having this open dialogue with God, if your faith is strengthened. Secondly, I encourage you to enter into a daily study of the scriptures. There are numerous free devotional series out there online that you can do on your own, with your spouse, with your kids, or your whole family. And I have found for me that the most growth in my life, in my faith, has occurred when I take the time to explore the word of God. The second part of what I feel we can take away from the Canaanite woman is this idea of persistence or perseverance. There was nothing that was going to stop her. And I feel that right now, especially in this time, this is a great reminder of the persistence that we have to have when considering all things in our lives. You're obviously aware that things are not going great right now in the country. But I want you to consider things in a historical perspective as well, compared to right now, and with that idea of making sure that we persist. If we step back in time just 100 years ago, 
only in our country looking. We can draw strength from what our ancestors and the way that they persevered through things. So if we look back 100 years, give or take, we have World War I, the Spanish flu epidemic that followed, and still our people persisted. The Dust Bowl, the Great Depression, World War II, the Korean War, and Vietnam, and still our people persisted on. The stock market crash in the late 80s, the Persian Gulf War, 9-11, the wars that followed, and our housing market crash of 2008, and still our people persisted on. You see, our history, even in the just the last hundred years, our people have always persevered. They did not give up and were willing as a whole to continue to work towards the continuation of our lives. Well, how do I know this? Because you're here today. That is how I know. You see, last week we discussed that we know there's going to be tough times in life. We talked about the things that Joseph went through. And we know that we're going to experience difficult things in our lives. But if we can have faith in persistence like the Canaanite woman, if we can find our faith in these difficult times and to continue to push forward, we know that our people will continue. And we know that we will not walk alone in those difficult times, that God will be right beside us through it all. We need to be mindful as well that oftentimes it takes others to help people persevere. It is very rare that a person can honestly and simply say, I did this all by myself. We need to be willing to be the people that God calls us to be, to continue to serve others in ways that will help them grow in their faith and help them persevere through this difficult time. So my challenge to you this week, if you're struggling with your faith right now, pray, read the scripture, and discuss it with someone that you trust. If you're struggling right now and you're not sure how you're going to persevere through these difficult times, pray, talk to someone you trust, and importantly, don't be afraid to ask for help. Know that I and your brothers and sisters in Christ are here for you. Know that the Lord is always there for you. And if you know anyone that's having difficulties right now, my challenge is you, for you is to reach out to them, help them grow in their faith, and help them persevere through these difficult times. Amen.